We just reviewed the Narzo 30 Pro a little while back and while I'd have liked to see that phone priced a little lower, I was still relatively happy with it. Now today, we take a look at its stripped down sibling, the Narzo 30A. Does it make sense to buy this phone in a market where a little extra nets you a Redmi Note 10? Let's get a definitive answer to that. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and if you do end up enjoying this video, like, comment, subscribe, you know how it goes. First up, let's start with the build. Now, there is no gentle way to put this. The plastic back, it's not good. It feels cheap, it looks tacky, and the in-hand feel, it's a little eh. But plastic does let Realme keep the weight to around 200 grams despite a 6000 mAh battery inside. So while this phone does not get any points for design, Realme does get a few points for keeping the weight manageable. Now, another positive here is that fingerprint scanner. In a time with the phone, it worked flawlessly, very fast and responsive. I would have liked it to be placed a little lower though, but that's nitpicking. Now, it's also here that we find the Narzo 30A's dual camera setup. At first glance, you might think it's a quad camera array, but it's only two cameras plus flash and the AI branding. We will get to these cameras in a bit. I've got quite a bit to talk about it. Now, the ripped pattern below this, well, the best way to put it is it feels weird. Rip for your pleasure, I guess. Now, other placements include a single speaker along with a USB Type-C port, microphone and a headphone jack to the bottom. So yes, there's a headphone jack and the speaker output is loud enough. By the way, the audio via that headphone jack, it's about okay. It is like just, you know, it's kind of what you get on any other budget phone. However, Realme does throw in a seven band parametric equalizer. So that kind of sets it apart a little bit. And it's cool to see on a phone in this budget. Now moving on, we have the power and volume keys to the right and this tray to the left. It's a triple slot tray. So that's something even the more expensive Narzo 30 Pro lacks. Okay, enough about the design. We've spoken a lot about it. Let's now talk about what is probably the 30A strongest selling point. The chip inside. Well, MediaTek has delusions of grandeur with certain SOCs. The G85 here, it's again, yet another solid processor. Eight cores, two plus six combination, A75 and A55. With day-to-day -day usage, it felt solid for the most part. Of course, not as smooth as the 30 Pro felt. Now, comparatively, we uh, did experience a little bit of sluggishness, but not enough to ruin the experience. And because it is a weaker chip, that was something we did go in expecting. But what we did not expect was the gaming performance. Uh, okay, we did kind of expect that given the G85 and Realme UI combination. We've seen it on the Narzo 20 already. That's it. Call of Duty Mobile was still pretty stable under normal settings. Uh, there wasn't any major frame drops. For what it's worth, we were testing out the 464 variant. Talking about which... Let's take a look at what the competition offers in terms of horsepower. Give or take a couple of thousand rupees, the very recently launched Redmi Note 10 comes with a Snapdragon 678 SoC. The Narzo 20A, that came with 665. Now the G85, I can say it's a good chip, but that makes, that's of no use to anybody unless you know where it actually slots in relation to what else is being offered. So if you're gonna look at it relatively, it slots somewhere between these two chips. It's better than the 665, but not as good as the 678. Uh, but then again, there is another offering in this segment, Samsung's Galaxy M12, and that has the Exynos 850, a SOC that's 10 times better in naming, you know, because this is G85 and that's Exynos 850 to the math. Okay, in all seriousness, the actual performance of the Exynos is about 50% of what you get here. So that basically rules Samsung out uh, with regards to performance. But the M12 does have that 6000 milliamp hour battery going for it. And that would be a huge advantage if not for the fact that Realme also has a 6000 milliamp hour battery here. The battery life on the 30A, it's nothing short of outstanding. In the days we tested this device, there wasn't a single day that we ran out of charge before bedtime. In fact, there was a period where we got nearly two days on a single charge. Now there's this feature in Realme Labs called Super Nighttime Standby. Uh, well, the naming might be Corny AF. It is a nice feature that limits the draw of the sensors and network elements, causing the standby drain to be pretty negligible. 
Now there is an 18 watt charger included in the box and for a sub 10k phone, that's pretty impressive. Okay, we've seen some of the 30A's biggest selling points so far. So now, you know, as a change of pace, let's check out some cons. The display here, pretty lackluster. It's a HD plus IPS LCD panel. Now a couple of days back, I would have told you this is still pretty decent value. But then the Redmi Note 10 series got announced. Even the regular Redmi Note 10, it gets a full HD plus super AMOLED panel. So this 720p IPS LCD feels like a letdown, even though the pricing is lower. Now I'm not saying the display is bad in any way, colors, viewing angles, all good for the price point. But given how close the Redmi is priced, in terms of display, you just can't help be tempted to pay more and get that AMOLED experience. Now, by the way, this here is a mini drop display. That's what Realme calls it. It's got a water drop notch up top. And here we find an eight megapixel selfie camera. The selfies, they came out looking good, uh, but they did have a couple of issues. First off, software kind of seems to have a greater share in composing the image than the hardware, uh, meaning uh, there seems to be a lot of extrapolated details. Now take this image for example, the subject here has a scruffy beard and curly hair. So when you zoom in, uh, you see there is a weird pigmentation or pixelation on his face. Other than that, the pic looks rather nice and you know ready to go on his Instagram. Now number two, the exposure can be a little bit of a hit or a miss. Sometimes you get shots like this, but other times like with this portrait shot, it's perfectly exposed, despite the subject being in, in shade while everything else is sunlit. The edge reduction was also above average. This appears to be the same 8 megapixel shooter uh, as we saw on the 20A. Now, to the back, the primary rear camera, it's a 13 megapixel sensor with an f2.2 lens. The secondary, well, it's there just to make up numbers. A two megapixel black and white sensor. And Realme's website is borderline misleading, calling this a triple AI camera setup. And this back from the pictures, you might think it has three cameras. Now, I just hate this kind of marketing. Now, why did Realme choose to do this? If you actually think about it, it's because the Narzo 20A, it actually had three cameras to the back. Now, two of those were depth sensors. Yes, two depth sensors. So that was effectively a single camera setup. And so is this. So try me a river. I don't really care uh, that they've cut more sensors. This kind of marketing though, it does leave a bad taste in the mouth because when you're just looking at the website, even as a reviewer, as somebody who's, uh, whose job is to know these things, even when I glanced at it first, triple AI camera setup, okay, I was like, okay, this back should be triple camera. But then only when I dug deeper, now even on the website, just looking at the phone, you can't make out that this is a dual camera setup. So again, like I said, this kind of marketing leaves a very bad taste in the mouth. Okay, anyways, ways, let's put the marketing cribbing on hold and check out the actual performance. The first thing to note is that the camera app is a little laggy. Jumping between the viewfinder and the gallery, for example, there's a delay. Not a deal breaker, but still uh, worth mentioning. The picture shot with this real camera, they turned out to be rather good. Given the price segment, we were actually impressed with the colors, the dynamic range, the exposure. Uh, I'd consider it all pretty acceptable. Now this picture here demonstrates what I'm saying. The grass is lit weirdly. Portions of it are in direct sunlight and portions of it have shadows from the wall behind it. The colors are still true to life. There's a hint of warmth on the dynamic range as you can see, quite nice. Now, in the next shot, you, we see three to four colors that are rendered well. Again, true to life, again, good range with on-point exposure. The night capabilities are nothing to write home about, but hey, they do offer a dedicated night mode unlike certain brands. Uh, the images though, they turned out Quite noisy, even with the night mode shots. Video maxes out at 1080p 30fps. It's pretty similar to the stills, meaning decent enough as long as you have good, uh, good enough lighting. So overall, the optics are quite good, but given how close the Redmi Note 10 is priced, and the fact that on paper it has much better optics, 48 megapixel primary and ultra wide, uh, a higher resolution selfie. Uh, now, just like with the display, the temptation to pay a little bit more and go for the Redmi Note 10 is definitely going to be there here too, and that pretty much wraps up the Narzo 30A in a nutshell. It's a decent little entry-level phone that's that's been completely overshadowed by the Redmi Note 10 launch. Now technically, and not that technically, I mean technically, the Narzo 30A and the Note 10 are in entirely different price segments. The 30A starts at 9K, the Redmi 12K, but the 464 variants are priced just 2000 rupees apart. The Full HD Plus Super AMOLED, newer, more powerful chip, the quad cameras, it might 
again, the word I'm going to use is might be too much of a temptation for any prospective buyer to resist. Now, if you're on a tight budget and 9K is what you're going to pay, if you've made up your mind on that, then the Narzo 30A might be a good enough option to go with. But if you can afford to splurge a little more, there are better options. So that's pretty much it for my take on this phone. Uh, that's pretty much it for this review. If you did find it useful, thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.